Here we have the next MacBook. Damaged by liquid. This was sent in by some other store. That's going to be great fun. Means somebody else got to it before me. Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with this little MacBook. Who hurt you? Why are you at my store after going to somebody else's? What did they do to you? Where did they touch you? Why were they unable to complete the job? Let's find out. What does this MacBook do? Computer turns on, but the LCD does not. Says the post-it note. Why is it that the screen is not turning on? Hmm. Now, I want to close the case of this MacBook. I'm going to unplug the MagSafe from this MacBook. I want to take the screwdriver for this MacBook. I'm going to take the screws out of this MacBook. And I'm going to find out where they hurt you. Who hurt you? Who took your backlight from you? The board has been taken out of the casing. Let's take a look at what our backlight circuit looks like. Our backlight fuse has seen better days. That looks quite dirty. And our connector looks very disgusting. What is this? What is this? Oh, Jesus Christ. This is what I love about the MacBook. You want to know what I love about the MacBook the most? Let me show you what I love about the MacBook the most. Is that if we were to go over here to this little backlight fuse, there's a fairly good chance that you're good. So the backlight fuse, the fuse, the thing that's supposed to blow when there is a problem, is perfectly fine. It's zero ohms. But the actual connector, the pins on the connector, are rusted. They're burned. They're destroyed. They're where there once was a happy connector. There now sits nothing but brown rust and burning. The connector itself has obliterated itself. But if we go over to the backlight fuse, the cornerstone of the circuit, right at the beginning, you'll see that there's nothing wrong with it because we are working inside of an Apple product. Why would the fuse blow when the connector can burn? It's a MacBook. The display connector is the fuse in a MacBook. So we're going to replace the LCD connector on this MacBook. And once that's replaced, we're going to watch this MacBook work again. It's going to have a backlight on its screen. It's going to boot. It's going to show you an Apple logo, and it's going to be very happy. First thing we're going to do is add some Amtec NC559 V2 TF Flux, available on store.rossmangroup.com. The second thing we're going to do is take our quick 861DW, also available on store.rossmangroup.com, and use that to heat up this LCD connector. Once heated, we'll be able to remove this from the board. So let's give this a bit of a heating. And we're heating. We're heating. We're heating. This is a multi-layer board that absorbs lots of heat. But with the power of the Quick 861DW from store.rossmangroup.com, that connector will come right off the board, and we can see that it's melting right now. We're just going to give it a little tug, and off it goes. Now, we're going to take some more flux and place it over these solder pads, and we're going to Replace that lead-free solder with leaded, which will make it easier to pick up. And we're also going to go over those two pads that are missing, because they may not actually be missing. They may simply be covered in corrosion that we can scrape away. And if we can scrape away the corrosion, that's a much better solution to not having pads at all. So I am going to, while the flux is still fresh there, just go back and forth and back and forth and see if we can bring back those pads. And it looks like we're getting close to having some pads again. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Those pads seem like they're almost about to be back. Amazing, folks. And now, before we do more scraping, because there is more scraping to be done over there, those pads are not done yet. 
we're going to use some Gootwick, also available on store.rossmangroup.com. Gootwick is going to pick up the excess solder. We use some leaded solder there to replace the lead-free solder on this board. Now, with the power of Gootwick, we are going to pick up that solder while simultaneously using it to scrape and clean away at those two pads that were corroded. So first thing we're going to do is use the Gootwick to pick up the solder. You'll notice the flux that's included inside of the Gootwick solder makes it much easier to pick up solder from pads than most other brands of wick. You'll also notice that you can scrape with this wick and you can scrape just enough to get rid of the junk on those pads. The wick is not only going to pick up the solder, it's also going to pick up some of the dirt and allow those pads to look great again. So we're going to scrape away on pins three and four. And we're going to scrape and we're going to scrape and we're going to scrape and all the way until those two pads that once looked like they were gone, that were burned, that looked like they were desecrated off of our board, are now brought and back to their original luster. Take a look at pins three and four for the backlight, folks. Are those not beautiful pads? I think those are beautiful pads. Now, the finishing touch is going to be some alcohol and a Q-tip. We're going to use some 99% isopropyl along with some beautiful Q-tips to clean up this section of the board and make it look nice and fresh again. Now it's not going to look perfect. It's not going to look perfect, but it's better than it was before. And I think we're almost at the point where we're ready for a new connector. Now that we've cleaned up this entire area, I think we're just about ready for a new connector. So I'm going to get a new connector and solder it to this board. If you need a connector, look no further than store.rossmangroup.com. On store.rossmangroup.com, you can find connectors for MacBook Logic boards and more. If you need an LCD connector, we, you can find it here. We have connectors for all different types of boards. If you have a board number, you can type your board number up here, like 820-00165, and click. And right here, it'll auto-complete before you even hit enter and show you every part that we have in stock for an 820-00165, including the LCD connector. Click, and you'll find that it's available today at a low, low price of $249. do not delay. Bye today. I'm going to get one of these connectors and I'm going to show you just how high quality they are. Are you ready to see this connector go onto the board? Because I am. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do it. We're going to have this nice clean connector go onto a nice clean board. That's beautiful. That's a connector. That is a beautiful connector. And it's right about to get soldered to this Apple motherboard. The first place we're going to do is going to be the anchor pins. And then after the anchor pins, we're going to do the middle pins. Here I'm going to be making use of the Hakko FX951 with an FM2027 iron and a T15-D16 tip. That's a T15-D16 tip. I'll have links available in the description down below. We're going to turn on that iron, and we're going to wait for it to beep. Once it beeps, it will have come to temperature. So now we're going to get the anchor pads, which are a little difficult on this board because they're going to be surrounded by these capacitors here. No big deal. Just a bit more challenging is all. There we go. Now we're going to get the other side. Remember, you can turn the board so it's comfortable for you. Don't think that you have to make the board comfortable. The board may be your guest, but you are the one who has to be comfortable. There we 
go. Make it a little bit more even. I'm caring too much about things that don't matter. You bastard. That was why my iron was seeming to get a little cold on me. The tip was coming out. Don't let the tip come out while you're in the middle of the job. You never want the tip to fall out while you're still in the middle of the job. It'll cause you all sorts of mistakes and issues and it decreases consumer satisfaction. I definitely did not do the best job soldering the left side because my tip was coming out and it was messing with my temperature and that was messing with the feeling of my iron and causing me to do silly things. So now we're going to solder all these pads. Watch the way that we solder all the pads. And make sure that when you get started on any serious job that your tip is not falling out. If it's Remember, a tip that falls out decreases consumer satisfaction. Notice how I'm able to simply drag the iron with this tip from pad to pad. Now also notice that I'm making sure to touch both the pad and the pin at the same time. You cannot heat just the pad and you cannot heat just the pin. You must heat both the pad and the pin. If you do both of these things, you will have good solder joints. If you don't, you will have bad solder joints. The solder is going to follow what's warm, so you need for both the pin and the pad to be hot. Now I'm going to give some extra care to pins 3 and 4, which were the ones that were a little messy for our backlight. And I'm actually going to allow pins 3 and 4 to be soldered together, because they're both for backlight. I'm going to allow it to help and kind of reinforce itself make up for the fact that those are kind of abused. So see, now those two pads that were kind of a little abused has, they're, they're kind of going to work together to help each other. And that's all we need. Always clean up when you're done. Once you've put your tip back, make sure that you clean up when you're done. We're going to grab a MacBook Air screen. And we're going to see if it's able to light up the backlight. Here we have a MacBook Air screen. Here we have a MacBook Air board that we just fixed. Let's see if they'll play nice together. Let's check the backlight voltage at output and see if we're getting an acceptable number. As you can see, the light is working on my tester screen. The tester screen is cracked, but that's fine. We don't need anything else to tell if backlight works. And we're getting 26 volts of backlight. So, why did this MacBook fail? It failed because the LCD connector burned. Why did the LCD connector burn? Because the fuse is still good. Why is the fuse still good when the machine was able to burn itself on the inside and have those metal pins melt themselves away? Because in a MacBook, the fuse is not the fuse. The pins on the connector for the screen are the fuse. Think different, or just don't think at all. By Apple. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you've learned something.